Hello you guys, this is Kim and bienvenidos to your June 2023 reading where we are going to find out what it is that you can expect for the month of June as well as get some advice and or guidance from Spirit for this month. And before we get started, just a quick reminder that nothing is set in stone because energy is always changing and shifting and a single action, decision, even way of thinking can definitely create a shift in the energy and thus an outcome. So even when it comes to things that are out of our control, how we choose to respond to those specific situations can make a huge difference. It can completely change how we experience that specific situation. Okay, but now let us take a closer look at the representative of each group. Representing group one is the owl. Representing group two is the rooster. Representing group three is fire. Okay, so please take a moment to meditate upon these groups in order to see which one calls out to you because the one that calls out to you will be the group for you. And once you have chosen your group, please head on over to the comment section and or the description box down below where the timestamp for each group is provided so that you can skip right on over to your reading. Okay, but now that you have chosen your group, let's get right into your messages. Let's go. Hello you guys who chose the owl, bienvenidos to your reading. So before we get started, I would like to go over the list of everything that is going to be covered in this reading. So there will be four parts. In part one, I will be sharing with you what I intuitively picked up on when connecting with the energy of your group. In part two, I will be looking at oracle cards to kind of get an overview of the month, find out what the main themes and lessons of this month will be. And in part three, I will be working with El Tarot to get information about any specific important events that will be occurring this month. And finally, for part four of the reading, I will be pulling out extra oracle cards to get any last messages, advice, and or guidance from Spirit for the month of June. Okay, but now let us get started. So when connecting or tapping into this group's energy, several messages did come to mind, which were look beyond and then you'll see forgiveness and learning, welcoming in, and receiving news. So I intuitively sense that the message look beyond and then you'll see is kind of a heads up that there is more to a situation. What you see isn't all that is. Because it is possible that you have been focusing so much on one thing that you are ignoring or not seeing all that is or all that could be. So a very specific example that may apply here is someone is considering what career path to take. Yet so far, they haven't come up with anything. But the only career paths they have been considering are the very popular, practical, and possibly maybe even obvious career paths, such as becoming a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a teacher. And even though these are valid, amazing career paths, they are not the only career paths that exist out there. There are definitely more. And possibly there could be a very unconventional career path that may resonate deeply with this person. If they would just look beyond the very obvious and practical career paths out there. So I do feel like this month is about thinking bigger, possibly thinking outside of the box, branching out, considering the unconventional and possibly even taking a sideways approach to a situation. And because you guys were called to the owl, I also see you gaining a higher perspective on a situation that you've been stuck on or felt stuck in. And this higher perspective is going to bring you the clarity that you seek in order to get unstuck. Now, with the message forgiveness and learning, you will be practicing forgiveness in the month of June. Now, remember that forgiveness is not about absolving another of their misdeeds or any wrongdoing that you felt they have done you, but it's more about detaching and releasing any heavy and intense emotions such as anger, sadness, hate, resentment, pain, 
in order to allow healing. So forgiveness is something that happens within. So whether it be forgiving someone else or forgiving yourself, I definitely see you practicing forgiveness in the month of June and learning a lot from this practice. Learning about yourself, what it means to forgive, and learning how to let go and release. Now, it could very well be that this higher perspective you are obtaining is what allows for you to reach forgiveness and or to release or let go of something that you have struggled to let go of. You know, because sometimes it is difficult for us to forgive because there could be a biased perspective or perception on the situation or because there is some emotional attachment. For example, if we are angry about something that happened, we might not be able to see this experience from a higher perspective because we see through the eyes of anger. So all we see is red. So stepping back from a situation or detaching oftentimes helps in releasing and letting go or obtaining that higher perspective. And with the message welcoming in, you will be welcoming in new energy into your life in the month of June. And actually, I feel like you have already been welcoming new energy. So you could have already been or currently are experiencing a lot of endings in your life because you know with every ending comes a beginning. So if you have been experiencing endings, that is an indicator that you are making space for newness. You are getting ready to step into a new chapter of your life. So the month of June could feel like a transitional month. You might be going through a lot of transitions or adjustments this month. And lastly, with the message receiving news, I feel this is pretty self-explanatory. If you have been waiting to hear back from someone or receive specific news, you will be hearing back from this person or people or whoever it may be, and you will definitely be receiving news. Those are all the intuitively channeled messages that I have for you guys. So now I am going to move into the cards. And I did pre-pull these oracle cards just to save us some time. But your cards are One Horse Town with number 37. And the key phrase is boredom, monotony, small-mindedness, branch out and move on, and naughty needed. And we also have the card healer. And I do want to pull out a number as well. So we have the number zero. Ooh, I like that we have the number zero because it's reminding me of the full card in tarot, which is the zero major arcana of the deck. And the full card is all about transitions because the full card represents the energy of someone who is about to step into a new beginning. And the number zero itself represents a clean slate. It makes me think of infinite potential because nothing has yet been set in stone. Anything and everything is possible. So if you have been experiencing endings, you might experience a few more endings in the month of June or you might just be working to finalize things. Like if you have been working to let go and or release something completely, you'll be on the last stages of that in the month of June. Yeah, because we do have the card healer here. And as you can see, this snake is literally shedding their old skin. Yeah, so you are releasing and letting go of everything and anything that belongs in the past. So I not only see you experiencing changes in your external outer environment, but I also see you experiencing changes within. Yeah, because again, with this snake shedding its old skin, I feel like this is indicating you are growing out of the old. Or this could be even indicating that you have outgrown or you will be in the month of June outgrowing current environments, situations, relationships, connections, preferences, mentalities, and even outgrowing a persona. So by the end of the month, you are going to feel like a completely different person or you are going to feel like something is different. And I am noticing that there is green in each card. So the color green could be of significance, but I associate green with understanding, compassion, nurture, healing, growth, 
This is also a color that is associated with the heart chakra. So I see you feeling very connected to your heart space in the month of June. And it is because you are releasing blockages of the heart space. You are healing, activating, and opening the heart chakra. So you might be feeling very sentimental and or emotionally sensitive this month. Because I do feel like things might surface up this month. And if they do, it's because those are the things that need to be released. Because there is no room for them or space in this new phase of your life. And I did mention that you will be practicing forgiveness this month. So I definitely do see that with all this color green and with the energy of healer. So any heartbreak or heartaches that you are holding on to, you will address in the month of June. So I do see you recalling difficult and challenging experiences of your past. And it is to see these experiences and or situations from a higher perspective. You know what? Because you guys were called to the owl, which is an animal that is often associated with wisdom and intellect. All this is happening because you have reached this point where you do have this unbiased viewpoint you do have this higher perspective you already have acquired so much wisdom you know how to take the lessons out of difficult and challenging situations so it's like your inner being maybe even your subconscious knows that you are ready you are ready to face whatever it is that you had difficulty facing in the past like you are ready to face it now you are ready to work through it you are ready to heal it or you are ready to work through the last bits of it. Yeah, because the number zero is also making me think of closure. You know, something coming full circle. So for a lot of you, I do see you receiving closure in the month of June. The other thing I see happening this month is that your interests or your preferences will be changing. So this month, you might find that what you used to like, what used to amuse you or fulfill you, is not so amusing or fulfilling anymore. Yeah, so you might experience an aversion to things that normally called out to you. Or you could even be experiencing this with people that you used to follow, you know, like on social media or like artists, singers, musicians that you used to follow and enjoy listening to or enjoyed their art, their work. You might not be resonating with them in the month of June. And it is because you are evolving, you are growing. The owl also indicates knowledge. So it's like everything that you needed to learn from these interests or people who served as teachers some point in your past, you have learned from them. And that's why you no longer feel a resonance with them because there's nothing more to learn from them or possibly even for you to teach them. Yeah, so just to give you an example with tarot readings, you know, it might be that tarot readers that you really enjoy listening to, you might not be resonating with them as much in the month of June. And the reason may be that you and this reader are now on different stages of your journey, or they have taught you everything you needed to know from them for now. So you no longer resonating with someone or something you used to resonate with isn't anything bad. It just means that you are ready to experience something new. Yeah, so the overall advice here is don't force anything. You know, if you no longer feel called to something, don't force yourself to like it. Don't force yourself to stick around. Because that is only going to result in you feeling stuck or possibly feeling frustrated or uninspired which is kind of the vibe we're getting here with One Horse Town. So because we have all this green, I am seeing that in the month of June, you are going to be heart-led. And what this means is that you will only be taking interest in things that you genuinely feel interested in. You aren't going to force yourself to like something that you don't genuinely like. You are going to stay true to you. This month is about being honest with yourself. It is about authentic expression sincerity and transparency as well being heart-led also indicates that you will be listening to your intuition this month so you might be taking a lot of what is known as inspired action like if you feel inspired to do something you don't overthink it you don't second guess it if it feels right to you if you feel called to it you go for it 
if you are someone who is very logical and are practical when it comes to decision making, I do see you continuing, you know, to be logical about how you make decisions. Yet the difference here is that you're not only being logical, you are also being intuitive. You are considering both your logic and your intuition. So there is this beautiful balance between the mind and the heart. And that could be something that you will be working to do is to bring about this inner harmony, bring about this balance between the mind and the heart, where neither is being ignored or pushed aside for the other. Now, being heart-led also indicates that, and this might sound a bit cheesy, so get ready, you will lead with compassion and love in the month of June. You will be seeing others through the eyes of love first. So with this energy of healer, I am seeing you releasing judgment and biases, which is what is allowing that higher perspective and which is what is also allowing for this heart chakra expansion because you're seeing through the eyes of love instead of through the eyes of judgment or biases. Yeah, so I did mention how you might be feeling very emotional this month and what just came to mind in specific is that you might at some points in the month of June feel quite overwhelmed but it's not in like a negative way it's more like you might feel this wave of love compassion gratitude wash over you like you might just see something like like a like a tree or what you perceive to be a beautiful scenery and all of a sudden you might be filled with this feeling of gratitude or wonder that your eyes might tear up or something like that. But I don't see this being a constant thing. It might just happen here and there throughout the month of June because I do see you experiencing some boredom as well. And because there is so much healing, there's so much inner work occurring, whether it be consciously or subconsciously this month, I do feel like this boredom is kind of your body, your bodies, like your physical, mental, emotional, and even energy body's way of getting you to slow down because you are working through a lot. Even if your external environment not, might not be very busy, there is a lot going on within. And when we are doing heavy inner work or any kind of inner work, it's tiring. It does take a toll on one. Yeah, so you might be experiencing a bit of fatigue or tiredness this month. And if so, please take it slow. You know, again, don't force yourself to be in an energy or a state that you don't feel like being in. Listen to your body this month. Listen to what your mind is asking of you. If your mind is asking you to slow it down, then please do listen. If you feel like taking a nap, and there's time for you to do so, then take a nap. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, be mindful of of your sleeping patterns in the month of June. Uh, Make sure you're getting enough hours of sleep. Yeah, but then I looked at the owl, and (laughs) I thought of the phrase night owl. So you might be experiencing a change in your sleeping patterns, or even your sleeping schedule in the month of June. Yeah, I do see you guys feeling more active and or awake at night. So for those of you who tend to be morning people, this might be quite a shift or a change for you guys. You might be feeling more clear headed or more inspired at night. And during the day, you might feel more like taking a nap or taking it slow, maybe not doing much. Yeah, so if you can rearrange your working schedule to kind of match um, your internal clock in the month of June, then it is being advised to do so. Like if you're self-employed or you are a student and you can take it slow during the day, not work, not study as much, maybe use the day to catch up on sleep or rest use the night to work, to study, um, then it is being advised to do so. Yeah, because I feel like this month is about going with the flow, you know? I feel like a lot of things are changing. (laughs) Not only your interests or your preferences, but also your habits, your patterns. And that might 
lead to a lifestyle change as well. The advice for the month of June is to be flexible because I feel like whatever changes you are experiencing this month, they aren't only for this month. I feel like these are things that will persist for the coming months. So, you know, instead of trying to fight against them, try to understand them, work with them, kind of settle into them. Um, Now, also with the energy of boredom, I did mention how you guys will be outgrowing a lot of things this month. And so if you have been experiencing boredom in certain areas of your life, that could be an indicator that maybe you have outgrown whatever this may be. So for example, let's say if it's been a while that you have felt bored at work, it could be that it's time for a career change or it's time to look for a new job. But it could also be indicating that the way you are approaching your work needs to change. Yeah, because the solution isn't always letting go of something completely or moving on from something completely. You know, like, I'm bored with this town, so I'm going to pack up my bags and leave, move to a different town. No, sometimes it's about the approach. Sometimes it's about how we are perceiving the situation that is bringing about the boredom. You know, because it could be that if you're feeling bored at work, it's not your work that is causing you to be bored, but it's rather how you are approaching it. Or it might be that something that you are currently working on, like a a project that you have been recently assigned that is boring to you. So And so that's why you're experiencing boredom. Yeah, so I do feel like this month is about exploring as well, seeing things from a new perspective, having a new perception of a situation. If you're feeling boredom, why are you feeling bored? What needs to change? Boredom gives us a lot of information about what needs to change. So what needs to change for you to come out of this monotony, if monotony is what you are experiencing? Yeah, because again, the owl is about intellect, mental stimulation. So maybe what you need is some mental stimulation. If you have been engaging or interacting with something that isn't bringing you mental stimulation, then maybe it's time to spend less time on that. You know, the, the very easy example that comes to mind is, you know, scrolling through social media, spending hours and hours on social media or on your phone or watching videos. Oftentimes, being overly stimulated can result in boredom because boredom is your mind's way of saying, whoa, that's too much. That's too much information. That's too many colors, too many sounds, too much of everything. Slow it down. I need to take a break. Yeah, so sometimes the best response to boredom is to take a break, rest, so that you can let your mind come up with the creative ideas. Yeah, so you might be looking into your habits and changing some of your habits this month. If you have been feeling bored at work or in your studies or your creative endeavors, like I said, maybe it's the approach that needs to change or you do need to start looking into branching out. Like if you offer services, maybe consider offering a new service. If you are a content creator, maybe consider creating new content. For those of you who are business owner, this could be about branching out or expanding your business. Maybe this could even be about when you work, like when you create. If you create in the morning, at day, maybe working and or creating at night might bring about new inspiration or a new sense of motivation. But because we do have the horse, horses represent freedom and independence. And for a lot of you, I feel like what you are craving is freedom, like freedom of time, freedom of expression. So if that happens to be the case, I do feel like in the month of June, you are going to be gaining some freedom. Because I did mention that I do see you leveling up. It could be that you are being promoted at your workplace or you are being moved up to a higher level of position or a position where you do have more freedom. Like freedom to choose your working hours or freedom to choose who to work with or what to work on. Or for some, this could be indicating that you are going to choose a career path or choose a profession or a line of work where you do have this freedom. So for example, like self-employment or freelancing, like you can choose when to work, how many hours, 
you dedicate to work. You can choose what to work on or who to work with, what projects to take on and so forth. So a lot of you could be coming out from a nine to five into self-employment or freelancing in the month of June. Or maybe you have already made that transition and what is happening in the month of June is that you're just adjusting. <laughs> yeah, so this month isn't about thinking small, you know? You are being advised to think bigger. Maybe you are feeling bored because you need a new challenge, you know? Maybe you do need to challenge yourself a bit in some way. This could be about setting new and bigger goals for yourself, possibly long-term goals. Yeah, the message that just came to mind is don't bite more than you can chew. You know, be careful to not set unrealistic goals for yourself. Don't self-sabotage in that way. You know, like if you haven't exercised in over a decade and then all of a sudden in the month of June you decide that you're going to exercise one hour every day and it's going to be an intense workout, you know, that could be a little too much, especially for your body who needs some time to adjust. Yeah, so be careful not to bite more than you can chew um, because when we set unrealistic goals and our expectations for ourselves, we can end up getting disappointed pretty early on and then we can end up quitting before we even begin. So, so yeah, think bigger, think outside of the box, challenge yourself a bit, but set goals for yourself that you know are achievable, that are reasonable. Um, okay, and it's interesting, I didn't see this, but we do have the number 37 here. If we reduce it, we get the number 10, and 10 is the number of endings and conclusions. So I feel like several cycles are ending this month. It's time for you to level up. It's time for you to grow. It's time for you to expand. You have outgrown your current pot, so it's time to repot. Some of you could literally be moving, physically moving, or you, maybe you have recently moved and in the month of June, you're adjusting to this new location. Yeah, so with the energy of zero, Spirit is saying this month, the world is your oyster. This month, you set the tone. This month is about setting the tone of what it is that you want to experience for the rest of 2023. Like what new do you want to experience? Um, with this arch of flower here, it's making me think of protection. So know that... You are being divinely protected this month. You are always divinely protected, but I feel like this month, <laughs> the shield of protection around you is stronger and it is because you are doing so much of this inner work and inner healing, releasing, letting go, and so forth. Let's see what else. Oh, the number zero is making me think of detoxification. So you could be detoxing this month. Could be like a social media detox or a full body detox. I know there are many forms of detoxification, so whatever one you are looking into, just remember to do your research and don't bite more than you can chew, which means take it slow and be safe. Hmm. And since the healer card is here and green reminds me of health, I believe this is indicating that your health will be improving this month. I see improvement in your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. Um, okay, but now I want to share the message that is on the back of this card. So we have always seek a mystery. Yeah, always have a little mystery in your life to keep you excited, to keep you looking forward to the future. You know, I know we often want to know everything that is happening, everything that is about to happen. Being in the unknown can feel a bit uncomfortable, but if we were to know everything, you know, we might end up getting pretty bored. So get comfortable in the energy of the unknown and always be open to something new. Don't be afraid to take a leap of faith every once in a while, especially if something calls out to you, if it feels right to you. So I'm going to pull out some tarot cards just to get info about any specific important events that will be occurring this month. that spirit wants for you to know of. So we have the Page of Cups with Daydreamer, Leading with Heart and Sensitive. Yeah, so I did mention how you might be feeling very emotionally sensitive this month, and I feel like this Page of Cups confirms that. We do have this person looking into 
water so that makes me think of like going within looking within introspecting you know seeing things from a higher perspective yeah leading with heart i did mention how this month you will be heart led this is another confirmation with daydreamer i feel like this is speaking about allowing yourself to think bigger to dream bigger don't be afraid to do that this month like i said this month is a transitional month. You're setting the tone. Spirit is saying anything and everything is possible. So I also feel like this month is a perfect time for you to manifest, attract, call in, to visualize, to plan, to set go new goals for yourself. Or simply think of the outcome. Think of the outcome that you desire or think of what it is that you want to experience. Just focus on that for a while. Communicate that to the universe and then let go it's it's sort of like think of the destination and then be open to how you get there because the page of cups makes me think of a very childlike energy so you know as children we simply dream and we dream big we don't think about how we're gonna achieve these dreams or what steps we need to take in order to get there or make these dreams a reality as children we don't concern ourselves over that we just dream we just see ourselves experiencing the dream so that's kind of the vibe i'm getting with this page of cups it's like just take a moment to visualize to feel into what it is that you want to experience and don't concern yourself about what you need to do to get there because i feel like that will be a form of manifesting for you guys this month yeah so this is just a practice this is not to say don't make plans don't make goals for yourself because taking those steps are definitely helpful in manifesting what it is that we desire but you know taking a moment to simply visualize and daydream without worrying ourselves about the how or the when can really be helpful in releasing the stress yeah so don't be afraid to dream and think bigger this month yeah, because the, the message that just came to mind is the only limit is your imagination. So this month you are being advised to work with your imagination. So you might find yourself daydreaming a lot. Um, you might find yourself visualizing a lot if you are a very visual person. Or you might often be caught in a daydream in the month of June. I also feel like the Page of Cups is indicating that something you daydreamed about or fantasized about in the past, that you felt very giddy about, very excited about, you could be seeing it come into fruition in the month of June. Or what I'm getting more in specific, because this is the energy of a page, you are going to start seeing this coming together. Yeah, because looking at this image, it feels like this person is looking into the future. So it could be that what you visualized in the past, it was just you looking into your future like the right here and now like this is the future that your past self was looking into yeah so if you saw yourself accomplishing something if you saw yourself meeting a goal it could be that in the month of june you're seeing how you're getting near and near closer and closer to accomplishing that goal or you're starting to see how whatever it is that you fantasized about is possible for you like opportunities might be coming in doors might be opening up for you that you start seeing, ah, I know that where this is leading. I can, I can see it unfolding. I can see it happening for me. Yeah, so you visualizing this month, you thinking bigger, could literally be you looking into your future. Like whatever you think of this month is something that you will be experiencing in your future at some point. Oh, and the Page of Cups also indicates happy news. So, so you will be receiving happy and or good news in the month of June. The Page of Cups also indicates new interests, yet since this page is so romantic, for some this may be referring to a new romantic interest. So either you will be romantically interested in someone new, or you will be seeing someone that you already know in a new light, in a romantic light. Yeah, but that's only if you're interested in that, if you're open to that. Because in general, overall, I do strongly feel this page of cup is indicating a new platonic relationship so you will be forming a new friendship in the month of june okay but now let me pull out another card 
So another page, a page of coins with young, young but grounded, solid beginning and strong foundation. Yeah, so pages are beginner's energy. So you could be starting something new this month. We literally have this message of solid beginning and strong foundation. So I did mention how some of you could literally be choosing to enter self-employment or maybe become a freelancer. Some of you could actually be starting a small business or you could start offering new services in the month of June. But I do see you starting something with the page of coins. So this could also be a project. I'm also seeing a lot of you possibly opening a social media account, starting a YouTube channel um, or a TikTok account, or it, this could even be like opening a website because we do have um, this person holding up a t-shirt. Maybe some of you are releasing a line of clothing or you're releasing something this month. If you are a musician, you could be releasing a song this month or you could be releasing an album. If you are a writer, you could be releasing a book or a short story. Or the month of June is the beginning of a big project. You know, if your aim is to be a writer or to publish a book, you could be brainstorming the book in the month of June or starting on the first chapter this month. If you have been applying for jobs, the page of coins is indicating that in the month of June, you will be starting a new job. Like you will experience your first day at work sometime in the month of June. Yeah, but there's this energy of beginner, like you're starting something or you are considered a beginner. Like if you're learning something new, for example, if you're learning how to sew, you're at the beginner's level. You will be considered a beginner. Yeah, so it's like experiencing the first stages of something. But remember, this page does grow up, does grow into the knight and then into a king. So if you are at the beginner stage, don't be discouraged by that. And I feel like you are being advised to not be discouraged by that. And actually, I don't, I don't see you feeling discouraged. On the contrary, I see you feeling pretty excited because, because you can think of the beginner as the full card in tarot. You know, anything is possible. There's infinite potential here. And the beautiful thing about being a beginner <laughs> is that this is the stage where it's the most acceptable. Society deems it the mo most acceptable and even kind of our inner critic to make mistakes because we are learning. Yeah, if you're beginning something, don't expect perfection right from the get-go. Embrace mistakes. Embrace the trials and tribulations. Embrace it because these will be your gold mines. It is through mistakes that you are going to learn so much. That you are going to acquire so much wisdom. And it's also going to help you discover your individuality, your uniqueness, your unique approach. It's going to help you find your style, your signature. Yeah, and the page of coins is a pretty slow energy, but it is a very stable and solid energy. So if things take time, you know, embrace that because you can rest assured that whatever it is that you're creating is solid and it's most likely going to last a really long time. You know, because sometimes when we move too quickly, when all we want is reach the top, we might skip on the foundation. In doing so, we might end up with a very unstable, wonky foundation, which is possibly going to give out at some point, especially when we have built on top of that foundation. Yeah, so it's always important to take time to work on the base, on the basics. I know the basics can be very boring, <laughs> you know, the basic skills, the basic knowledge, but it's the basic that is creating our base and foundation. It's the basic that is the most important because those basic skills, for example, you're going to take them with you always. And you might need to rely on them at some point. And if you don't have them, you might find yourself in a pickle then. So... Yeah, sometimes the most boring of things are the things that we need, are the most necessary. So yeah, don't skip any steps is the, is the advice I'm getting with the page of coins. Allow yourself to drink big, think big, but take it one step at a time. Yeah, but the page of coins is giving me this vibe of, of excitement. So I definitely see you feeling excited about something that you're starting or something that is fairly new. 
There's a lot of page en energy here, which I love because it's pages are about beginnings, are about starts. So you're definitely welcoming a new era. <laughs> yeah, because we have the Page of Cups here, this could even be a creative project. New creative ideas that you're working on in the month of June. Or new creative ideas that I see you excited about working on in the near future. Yeah, because I feel like you'll be taking it slow. I feel like a lot of you will be getting a lot of ideas, but you are like prioritizing. Like, okay, I'm going to start working on this in the month of June and I'm going to leave these other ones for the, the months to come, which is totally fine. We don't have to tackle everything at once. And I feel like that's what's being recommended for you. Take it one step at a time. You'll get through everything, you will. The page of coins could also be referring to the fact that you will be settling in somewhere new in the month of June. So for those of you who have been planning to move, to relocate, I do see that happening for you in the month of June. Or if you have recently moved, I do, settle, I do see you settling in into this new place in the month of June. This could even be something like moving into a new office or a new studio. Or if you work from home, maybe you are setting up your office or your workplace in a new spot or room of the house. But I do see you settling in somewhere new this month and feeling pretty excited about that. Excited about the whole process of settling in. Um, with the page of coins, I see you being quite mindful with your spending of your spending habits. You could be a bit frugal this month. But I also see it's, that it's because you guys are saving. You're saving up for something. Um, the word Kickstarter came up. So um, you could be participating in the Kickstarter program uh, to get fundings for a project. And I do see you getting those fundings. Um, yeah, there's something about saving. Saving up for something. Being mindful of your spending habits. Being careful not to overspend. Or investing in your business is the other thing I'm getting with the page of coins. I feel like you're slowly starting to invest in your business if you do own a business or are planning to start a business. And I see you feeling pretty excited about that because I feel like things are going well for you. Because we do have healer here and the owl, you could be reaching out to someone who is a specialist or someone who has already a lot of years of experience in a specific field of work or line of work to either get guidance, advice, or counseling from them or to work with them on something. So um, because we do have healer, this could be like a therapist or a counselor. The owl made me think of shamanism. So a shamanic healer maybe or energy healer um, or maybe you could be reaching out to a professor, a teacher. You could be getting private lessons from a tutor, or you could be going to an advisor, like a, fin a financial advisor or a business advisor. Yeah, and this person could be helping you gain a higher perspective on a situation that you have felt stuck in or stuck on. Yeah, but I'm getting like student, teacher, mentor, mentee vibes here. Yeah, so be open to learning from someone who does have a lot of years of experience because they will be teaching you a lot or they have a lot of inf important information to share with you information that is of value. Okay, but um, let's see. Snakes, owls could be important. Animals, symbols, omens, as well as horses this month. Page, page. Looking at the word page, it's making me think of an actual page, like a page of a book. For those of you who are aspiring writers, or at some point in your life you dreamed about writing or publishing a book, I do see that in the month of June, you will be writing the first page of a book that you will be publishing in the future or just a work that you will be publishing in the future. Um, okay, but now I want to pull out extra oracle cards to get any last message, advice, and or guidance from Spirit. So we have... Ooh, exciting new opportunities are abound. Take a chance and change your life. Yep. And we also have, it's important to get fresh air daily. Get outside, look up, move around in it, and breathe deep. 
Yeah, I feel like this month you are being advised to maybe spend a little more time outside, especially if you have been fixated on your phone or have been spending too much time on your phone. Yeah, you are also being advised to move your body around a bit, stretch, do some light physical exercises. Any energy that is stagnant or stuck, physical movement will help get that energy flowing again. And I feel like it will also help you clear your head if you feel like your head has been a bit clouded lately. Yeah, but these are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information will be in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. But I thank you so much for being here. I am wishing you a wonderful month of June and until the next moment, bye-bye. Hello you guys who chose the rooster, bienvenidos to your June 2023 reading. So before we get started, I would like to quickly go over a list of everything that is going to be covered in this reading. So there will be four parts. In part one, I will be sharing with you what I intuitively picked up on when connecting with the energy of your group. In part two, I will be looking at oracle cards to get an overview of the month. Find out what the main themes and lessons of this month will be and so forth. And in part three, I will be working with El Tarot to get information about specific important events that will be occurring this month. And lastly, for part four, I will be pulling out extra oracle cards to get any last messages, advice, and or guidance from Spirit for the month of June. Okay, so now let us get started. So there were a couple of messages that came to mind when tapping into this group's energy, which were sharing different interests, working through, looking for a solution or looking for a way out, fix up, walking away, leaning on, and hearing aid. So with the message sharing different interests, I intuitively sense this is indicating that in the month of June, you are going to be connecting, interacting with someone who shares different interests from you. This person might feel like the complete opposite of you. Yet the interesting thing about this is that these differences between you and this person are not a turnoff, but rather they are exciting. You find this person intellectually stimulating. So you don't mind listening to this person talk about their interests or hearing their opinions because even though you don't agree, you still find it fascinating. Now with the message working through, I do sense this is indicating that in the month of June, you will be working through particularly painful and or difficult situations of the past. Or you could be working through specific emotions or limited beliefs or mindsets. Or it could even be working through a trauma. Yeah, because with the messages looking for a solution or looking for a way out, I do see you actively working on finding a way out of a limited mindset or finding a way out of a problem or out of a difficult and or tough phase or situation. Yeah, and for whatever reason, the rooster is making me think of progress. So I do see you experiencing progress when it comes to this in the month of June and possibly even a breakthrough. Because I don't know if you guys see it, but this rooster looks like they are smiling. So what I'm getting from this rooster is a sense of relief and liberation as well. Like, ah, uh, I have liberated myself from one of the many things that has been holding me back. Roosters, they can't fly. But the message that just came to mind was, I'm slowly but surely getting reconnected with my wings. But I also feel like the messages looking for a solution or looking for a way out could be indicating that in the month of June, you could be reaching to an expert or an advisor, counselor, to get advice and her counsel on how to get out of a situation. So it could be something like how to get out of a contract or an agreement or if you have been experiencing financial problems, how to get out of a financial rut. Or it could be on how to improve 
a situation, like a business situation. Yeah, but I feel like some of you could be going to a legal expert in the month of June to get advice and or counseling on how to get out of a legal bond or tie. And with the message fix up, you could literally be fixing up something in the month of June. So like working on a renovation or restoration project. It could be something small like restoring a furniture item or restoring an item of clothing. Or it could be a bigger project like renovating a kitchen or restoring a house. Yeah, but I definitely do see you fixing up something. <laughs> And if I recall, when I was channeling the messages, something about a dress, fixing up a dress came up. Yeah, and I do recall seeing in my mind's eye a wedding dress. So um, if you are planning to attend a very important or glamorous event in the month of June, and you're planning to wear something that is custom made or tailored to you, you know, like a wedding dress, for example, um, please keep up to date <laughs> with the modifications yeah, because you might be needing to do some adjustments. And so, you know, if you were to keep up to date, it won't end up being last minute adjustments per se and feel in a rush. Now with the message walking away, you may be walking away from an environment, a situation, a connection or relationship that just isn't working out. You could even be walking away from an offer or an opportunity to work with someone or work on a project. And it's because something about this offer, this opportunity isn't sitting right with you or or it isn't at par with your standards or with your needs. Yeah, but I also get the feeling that someone will be walking away in the middle of a project. Like someone might just call quits all of a sudden. Um, this could be you, but I also feel like it could be someone else, someone that you might be working with, working for maybe, doing a commission for it. It could be something like um, if you sell products, someone might be putting in an order, but then they cancel the order halfway through or kind of at the last minute. Mm, I know it's interesting. <laughs> now I'm thinking back on the message, looking for a solution or looking for a way out. So maybe it's you who puts in an order or request or a commission for something, but then you change your mind. You want to drop it halfway through or at the last minute, and that's when you seek professional advice on how to best do this. Yeah, maybe you could re be requesting something and what you get isn't what you asked for and you're wanting your money back. Or some of you could literally be on the other end where you are seeking compensation for a work that you did that wasn't fairly paid. Hmm, maybe we'll get more information on this with the cards. Now, with the message lean on, I do see you gaining support and are being supported this month. And or it could be that you will be offering support or supporting someone in the month of June. And lastly, with hearing aid, um, for those of you who have been thinking about acquiring and or start using a hearing aid, or maybe you have been waiting to receive your own hearing aid. I do see you making up your mind to acquire or start using this hearing aid in the month of June or I do see you receiving this hearing aid this month. Um, okay, but now I'm going to move into the cards. So I did pre-pull these oracle cards just to save us some time, but we have number nine with a, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy with self-love relaxation, regeneration, satiety within, and replenishment. And we also have potential. I also want to pull out a number. Ooh, okay. So we have the number two. Okay. The number two is a number of partnerships, relationships. It is also a number that stands for duality and balance. I did mention at the start how you could be connecting with an unlikely person this month, someone who is the complete opposite of you. Yeah, and that's making me think of duality, like you and this other person, when you're together, you're like yin and yang. But just like the yin and yang energies, you 
work beautifully together. You balance each other out. Yeah, so there is potential here of you two forming a very strong bond, connection, and or relationship. And because this seed has already rooted and it's starting to sprout, it could be that you have already formed some kind of bond with this person. Maybe this isn't someone exactly new. Like you have known this person for a little while and you have established a connection with them and a strong connection at that because you see all these roots this lets me know that this connection is stable it's solid yeah and the potential card is also making me think that even though you and this person on the surface look very different at the core you are very similar so you might have similar core values or your soul essence might be very similar. And because the rooster, for whatever reason, it's making me think of like a conquistador. Romance. For those of you who are open to romance or are looking for a romantic partner, I know this won't apply for everyone, but for some, this potential card is indicating that this connection or relationship has the potential to grow into a romantic one. Yeah, but again, that message will not resonate with everyone because for the vast majority of you, this is a platonic relationship. This is a friendship that will only grow stronger and deeper over time if you and this other person are open to that. But with the energy of the number nine, I do feel like this month you are going to be working to bring something to an end. And because we do have the rooster here and it's giving me working <laughs> vibes, this could be speaking about projects, assignments, tasks. Yeah, and the number two is reminding me of the two of pentacles in tarot, which speaks about juggling more than one thing. So you could be finalizing more than one project, or this could be indicating that you have been working on several things at once, and that has kept you very, very busy, and possibly detained you from enjoying some free time, some me time. Yeah, because the rooster is giving me this frenzy, frantic, all over the place, here and there kind of energy. Or it could be that a project you've been working on, it's taking longer to complete it than expected. And so that's taking and consuming a lot of your time and your energy. And it results in you juggling more than one thing. Yeah, because now you have to attend to other things, but you still have to attend to this project that you've been working on that's taking a little bit longer to complete. And so things might be piling up and that's what might have you feeling a bit stressed out or that might be what is creating this frenzic or hectic energy that I'm sensing with the rooster. Um, and so what I see happening is that in the month of June, you are deciding to take a break. Yeah, because you might even be feeling frustrated with this project or this thing that is taking longer to complete because you have been on it, working on it for a long period of time. And so in this case, sometimes the best course of action is to take a break, to step back and away from the situation in order to unwind, take a breath, <laughs> reset, get ourselves re-energized. So that when we come back to this project or whatever it may be, we come back to it clear-headed, energized, motivated, and so forth. Or it could be that some of you are creating pause in order for you to attend to other things, you know? Like instead of making this thing you've been working on your priority, you are prioritizing other things in the month of June. Other things that need attending to. And so that's you kind of catching up. And so you might not be completing this project or whatever it may be this month, but I do see you completing other tasks as well as taking care of yourself, unwinding, and releasing a lot of frustration as well. Some of you could have even been working to get something going, to kickstart something. Yeah, so at the start of the month, you could be rushing to meet some deadlines or you could be feeling pressure to complete, deliver, and or present something. But then once you've done it, it's like you can relax. You can lay back. Because the other vibe I'm getting here, it's like you are taking a break because there is nothing more than you can do. So like everything that you needed to do, everything that was in your power, in your hands, you have already done. You've done your part. So you can relax now. This could even be speaking about a waiting period. 
Like there's nothing else that you can do. All that you can do now is wait. Wait for someone else to do their part of the work or the project or wait for someone else's response, feedback, evaluation. Yeah, because the potential card is giving me the vibe of I have planted the seed, I have done my part, and so now all I have to do is wait. Wait for the seed to do its thing. And while I wait, I am going to attend to my basic needs. Everything that I put on hold while I was doing my part, working hard, I'm going to attend to it now. I'm going to take advantage of this waiting period. So an example of a situation that could apply here is a student who was studying hard to take an exam or to give a presentation and then sometime at the start of the month or maybe even at the end of the month of May, they take their exam, give their presentation and now all they have to do is wait. You know, wait for the results, the outcome, wait for the evaluation. And so while they wait, they choose to relax or maybe even distract themselves with focusing on them, you know, focusing on catching up on some me time. Yeah, or this could be an advice from spirit. Like if you are anxiously waiting for a response, don't sit around and contemplate on what kind of response you're going to get or what the outcome will be because that, that is only going to create more anxiety. Don't think of what could have been or what you could have done better because the past is in the past. It's done. You're here now. Focus on what is in your power right now. Focus on what it is that you can create positive changes in. Focus on you because I do feel like a lot of you put yourselves in the back burner in order to give your all to this thing that you were working on. So that lets me know that you guys were dedicated to this. You gave it your all. And because we do have this seed that has rooted and is sprouting, I definitely do see that your efforts will be paying off. Like you guys did a pretty damn good job. This seed is a success. It's sprouting. It's growing. So I do see you getting good results or getting a really good outcome. Yeah, so the rooster also makes me think of health. So I do see you attending to your health, to your well-being. So if you postpone certain appointments, I do see you rescheduling for the month of June and going to these appointments, especially anything to do with your health. You know, like if you postponed um, a meeting with your therapist, I do see you catching up with your therapist in the month of June. If you postponed an appointment with your dentist, with your general doctor, I do see you rescheduling an appointment to go to your dentist or visit your general doctor in the month of June. I also feel like there's an advice here that anything that has been bothering you, you know, if you have been feeling aches or pains in certain areas of your body, you are being advised to attend to them. Don't, don't ignore them. Don't put yourself and your needs on the back burner any longer. You know, because a minor inconvenience can grow into a big issue if it's not attended to early on. So don't leave anything to the last minute. Oh yeah, maybe that's the message. The overall message advice for the month of June. Don't leave anything to the last minute. If you can attend to it now, attend to it. So make sure to go to all of your checkups. If you've been putting something on hold or you have kept postponing a checkup, attend to it in the month of June because I do see you having some free time or I do see kind of that the universe is freeing up time for you. Like they're freeing up your schedule so that you can attend to your basic needs so that you can go and do all of your necessary checkups. So if you experience any delays, like someone postponing on you, that is most likely divine intervention being at play. That is most likely universe coming in to free up your schedule. So don't try and fill that slot with more work. Use that time to look after you to attend to your basic needs, your basic needs. Don't put your health and your well-being on the back burner because that might just bite you in the butt later on. When I say well-being, I mean it in all aspects. You know, your mental, your physical, your emotional well-being. Um, I also feel like this month, it's about catching up on certain tasks that you put on hold, you know, like 
visiting the bank or um, paying certain bills, cleaning up your house or your apartment or your dorm room, washing your clothes, you know, visiting family or meeting up with friends, catching up on your favorite um, drama series. Yeah, there's this vibe of like catching up, catching up on things that you have put on hold for work, for studies, for personal projects, and so forth. Because we do have these candles here, someone in the bathtub. I do see you practicing self-care this month. Some of you could actually be um, practicing some self-love rituals like affirmations or journaling. I get this self-soothing vibe with the if mama ain't happy ain't nobody happy card um i also feel like there is a heads up about your temperament which i mean when we're very busy when we're feeling overwhelmed we might experience a lot of mood swings you know and it's because we're tired if we haven't been sleeping well you know our mind gets foggy we feel frustrated we might even feel on edge so the slightest inconveniences might create a huge impact on us. Yeah, so if you've been overworking yourself or working tirelessly, you know, pulling all-nighters, yeah, you are being advised to take it slow this month. Also use discernment. If you're feeling frustrated or angry or you start feeling very pessimistic, it could simply be because you're tired, you're sleepy, or you're hungry. So think back. Have you skipped any meals? Did you eat lately? If you haven't, then put some food in your stomach first before you decide that the world is ending or that the world is against you. Yeah, so you, you might even feel like people are quite irritating this month or like they're purposefully trying to target you or push your buttons, but that's only your perception and I feel like that's only a perception that is being triggered by tiredness, by feeling burnt out, by feelings of frustration. So yeah, because you know when we're hungry, when we're tired, we might get a bit cranky and our perception of people and of situations and of things might be a bit skewed and biased because we are feeling cranky. Yeah, so that's why it's important that we're well rested, well fed, well looked after. <laughs> Yeah, so again, I know this message keeps being repeated, but I feel like it's super important for the month of June. Attend to your basic needs. Make sure you're eating well, you're sleeping well, that you're taking care of your hygiene. Yeah, because with bath here, I do feel like some of you guys do see an improvement in your mood or, or your temperament after you have taken a bath or a shower. Yeah, so if you haven't showered in a while, you could start feeling a bit frumpy or unmotivated, tired. That happens to me. <laughs> like if I take a while to take a shower, I start feeling really bad. Like my mood just plummets and my mental state kind of also takes a, takes a hit. And I know that, I know that. <laughs> yeah, so my hygiene is really important to my mental well-being and also my emotional well-being. So that might be the case for some of you guys. Like maybe you just need a, a snack, a nap, or a shower, a bath. Yeah, because sometimes it is that simple. It ain't that deep. All we need is some food in our stomach to catch up on some Z's or to cleanse and rinse our body to feel better or slightly better. So I do see that being the case here, especially for the month of June. My eyes keep being pulled to this purple candle. So the color purple could be of significance. I feel like the color purple will be very relaxing for you this month. It's reminding me of lavender. So maybe even lavender, the scent of lavender could help you relax. Lighting purple candles, lavender scented candles. Some of you could be literally buying candles and doing some candle therapy in the month of June. Um, candles also make me think of rituals and manifestation. So you could be doing some rituals or prayers or manifesting this month. And because we do have this seed over here, I do see these, these techniques working for you. Like the potential card is giving me the vibe of it's active, it's working, it's unfolding, it's doing its thing, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. The other thing I'm getting is that some of you guys could be wrapping up 
a project you've been working on, but sometime in the month of June, you could be starting a new project. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of you guys are working on multiple things at once. So you could be completing some things, but then working on starting something new or working on getting something off of the ground is the vibe I'm getting. So I feel like you guys have been doing a lot. You've been doing a lot. Um, and so that's why um, universe or spirit is kind of advising you to, to slow down. You don't just make a window of time to simply relax, to catch up with you, to check in with yourself, to attend to your basic needs. Um, it could even be that before you start this new project, or you focus on this new thing, you are choosing to take a break or a mini vacation. Some of you could actually be going on a mini vacation in the month of June uh, because we do have the rooster card here. This is making me think of like the countryside. So you could be vacationing somewhere that is outside of the city or on the outskirts of a town. Or some of you could be choosing to simply stay home. Yeah, but I feel like if you are vacationing, you are choosing to vacation somewhere where there's not a lot of noise or it's not very hectic you know like instead of visiting a city you're visiting a countryside or a small town yeah because the rooster is making me think of slow or simplistic living yeah so i definitely do see you engaging in leisurely pleasures this month practicing slow or simplistic living Ooh, the number nine is making me think of the ninth house in astrology which is the house of foreign travels, foreign places, foreign languages. And I did mention hearing aid at the beginning. So for those of you who are interested in learning a new language, some of you could be learning sign language this month. Or if you have been learning sign language, I do see you putting into practice what it is that you have learned. So you could be communicating or connecting with someone who knows sign language. Okay, but now I am going to pull out some tarot cards to find out what specific or and or main events will be occurring this month. So we have the Two of Swords with at a crossroads, avoiding the truth and tough choices. So again, we have the energy of the number two. So the Two of Swords is speaking about needing to make a very important decision this month, but... Oh, no, you know what? I feel like this is more about you waiting for someone to make a decision. And we kind of touched upon that, you know, like you needing to wait for a reply or for a callback, you waiting to hear back from someone. Yeah, so that might be a, a challenging aspect of this month, the waiting period, you know, feeling like you are at a crossroads because the Two of Swords denotes not being able to make a confident decision because you feel like you're lacking clarity or information. And so when we're waiting to hear back from someone, we might feel like at a crossroads because we don't have all the information that we need in order to know what happens next, you know? So that's kind of the vibe I'm getting with the Two of Swords. Yeah, so even though you're enjoying your free time, your me time, this Two of Swords energy could come up every now and then. You know, like while you're enjoying a bath, all of a sudden you might think about the situation and get a little nervous or start worrying again. But it's just briefly, it's momentarily. Or like I said, some of you could be actively working to distract yourself from thinking about this too much because it does stress you out or gets you feeling stuck. Yeah, so if you are waiting on news because the Two of Swords did show up, hmm, you might not be receiving these news in the month of June. You might need to wait until the month of July or if you do end up receiving these news, um, it could be more towards the end of the month. Yeah, because the Two of Swords is also making me think of delays or postponements. And I kind of did mention that how some things might be postponed or delayed in the month of June and if so, to not not try and force to move this along because if it's being delayed or postponed it could very well be for a reason it could be divine intervention being at play but at the beginning before looking at the cards i also did mention something about cancellations so some of you could be debating on whether to cancel something you know, like cancel an order or maybe put something on hold like a project or drop out of a project. Yeah, but the Two of Swords speaks about considering. It's not a card that indicates making a final decision. So you might... Hmm, let me pull out a clarifier for this. Oh, 
Okay, so we have Temperance. Sorry, I didn't shuffle the deck on camera. I don't know why. Uh, we have Temperance with Balance, Harmony, and Perspective. Hmm. Yeah, so it's like, do you see this person kind of pouring these cups back and forth so it gives me this feeling of like weighing out your options so if you are indecisive about something the temperance card could simply be advised to weigh out your pros and cons make a pros and cons list that might help you out in making a final decision or the temperance card could also be indicating you know before making any final decisions make sure that you are not being impulsive or emotionally reactive that you don't make a decision out of emotional reactivity you know emotions when we're high on emotions our judgment can get clouded so if emotions are running high give yourself some time and space to process those emotions before you decide on anything yeah because temperance speaks about patience so i don't feel like you need to make any final decisions this month so if you're not sure about something and you don't have to make a decision right then and there, then you are being advised to take your time. Take your time with this. Yeah, because I don't, I don't feel like you will be needing to make any, any decisions in the month of June or that you will be making any decisions this month. But there's no clear answer here. At least not that I am intuitively sensing and I feel it's because it's all up to you like universe isn't saying this is right and this is wrong you do have free will when it comes to this just their only advice to you is don't be impulsive don't make any decisions in the spurt of the moment especially if emotions are running high mm, so maybe this this could even be advice to step back in a way yeah, because it could be that you have been focusing on this for a really long time that, like, you've gotten stuck on it. So if you were to step back and away from this, like, take a break from this, and then come back to it later, you might have a different perspective on it. You will be seeing the situation with fresh new eyes, and it is then where you might get the clarity that you seek or that you need. Yeah, and that could be what this, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody ha happy card could be referring to. Like you are taking a break from something that has been frustrating you or that you felt stuck in or stuck on. So that when you come back to it, your mind is more clear. You feel motivated or energized to start working on this thing again or to face it head on or to start analyzing it with a fresh new perspective. Yeah, so that's kind of the vibe I'm getting with these two cards, but I don't see you making a decision this month. And I feel like that's the advice. If you don't need to make a decision then and there, then take your time. Be patient with this, especially if, if it is something important, something like a commitment, something like signing a contract, something like taking on a project and so forth. And if you are waiting to hear back from someone or waiting on someone else's decision, you might be hearing from them a little bit later than expected. But because the temperance is a very peaceful and harmonious energy, I do feel like this is indicating that whatever news you will be receiving, they will be positive. Okay, but let me see. Any other event? So we have justice with cause and effect, truth, and get what is deserved. Yeah, so <laughs> justice is another card that speaks about balance. So this is letting me know that you will be receiving good news, that your efforts will be paying off. Because we do have this energy of cause and effect, and justice is associated with the zodiac sign Libra. And Libra is about fairness and equality. So what you put into something is exactly what you're getting back. So if you worked hard on something, if you were committed, if you were consistent, you are reaping the rewards of, of that. That is what justice is letting us know. Because justice can speak about contracts. Someone might be extending you a business proposal or a business offer or some kind of offer that involves an agreement or a contract in the month of June or some form of transaction, monetary transaction. And what is proposed to you, what is offered to you or what is stipulated in the contract might not be to your liking. And so this justice card is saying, don't settle. Remember that you can negotiate. So negotiate. Make sure that everything is fair. If you need to go to an advisor for guidance, for advice, for assistance, to go over things, then please do so. And I feel like it is advised to get a second opinion or to get the assistance of an advisor or an expert. Yeah, but the advice here is to not 
settle. So again, before you commit to anything, um, make sure that you take your time to really think through it. Weigh out your pros and cons. Libra, justice is all about the scales. Consider your options. I do feel like you guys have options. If something doesn't work out in the month of June, that doesn't mean that there aren't other options because I feel like they are. And if something doesn't work out, it's possible that, again, divine intervention is at play. It might be because that wasn't the best option for you or because there is a better option out there. So consider all of your options. Don't limit yourself. Justice is also referring to all things pertaining to legal matters. And I kind of did mention something about legal matters um, at the beginning. So this justice card is letting me know that anything pertaining to legal matters, you are going to get a positive or favorable outcome. So I do see things working out for you. I keep thinking of the word compensated. Yeah, if some of you guys were looking to get compensated for something, you will be receiving this compensation in the month of June. Or in the month of June, you will be receiving news that you will be getting this compensation. Justice also makes me think of standing up for yourself, advocating for yourself. So um, you could be standing up to someone this month. We do have this younger person here is standing up to an authoritative figure. So it could be standing up to an authoritative figure, you fighting for your right. But I feel like the justice card is also a heads up to not be rash and or impulsive this month, especially with temperance being here. And I did mention how some of you, because you've been working so hard or studying hard, your temperament might be affected a bit because of that. So Emotions might be running high this month, and when emotions are running high, that's not the best time to make any important decisions or jump into any conclusions, um, make any assumptions, or make any big moves. Um, so yeah, be mindful this month because justice speaks about cause and effect. So anything that you do in the month of June that is not in alignment with you, with your moral compass, with your values, might be biting you in the butt later on. Yeah, so remember that our actions, they do have an effect. Yeah, so just make sure to not say anything that you don't mean and to not commit to anything that you're not sure about and not to do anything that you might later regret. And the rooster is also making me think of the ego. The ego isn't an evil, isn't anything bad, but when the wounded ego shows up, then things can get a bit messy. So just be careful to not let your wounded ego get the best of you. Or it could be that you will be engaging with someone who lets their wounded ego get the best of them or their wounded masculine. Yeah, and if so, it's best not to enable this person. So if you don't want to get involved in any drama, the advice here is don't participate in it. This justice card also speaks about boundaries. You will be implementing and possibly enforcing your boundaries in the month of June. Your boundaries will be crucial this month. The justice card can also speak about partnerships, long-term partnerships. And we kind of touched upon that at the beginning. So I feel like this is just confirmation that you could be entering into a long-term committed relationship with someone that you are getting to know or someone that you will get to know more in the month of June. For those of you who have been seeing someone, this justice card could be indicating your relationship moving to the next level of commitment. And with justice card... It's making me think of honesty. We literally have the key term truth here. Yeah, so I do feel like someone might be delivering harsh truths. It could be you or it could be someone delivering harsh truths to you. But in the process of it, they could end up being a bit disrespectful. This is just a, a reminder. Being honest is not about being aggressive, being mean, or being hurtful. We can be honest whilst being respectful. Justice is all about respect. Yeah, but that's what I'm seeing so far. Um, just to quickly point out the zodiac signs that we have here. Temperance is associated with Sagittarius, Justice with Libra. So some of you could have Sagittarius and or Libra, Libra placements in your birth chart or someone who is 
a Sagittarius Sun Moon rising or a Libra Sun Moon rising could be playing a significant role in your life in the month of June. Um, I was meant to reveal the message that is on the back of this card. So we have every morning is a fresh start. Yeah, so remember that every morning is a new beginning. You can start anew. If the previous day wasn't such a good day, that doesn't mean that the next day can't be a good one or a better one. And for whatever reason, I feel like this is a reminder for some of you guys that you can make amends, that it isn't too late. If you feel like you were rude or mean to someone, remember that you can always reach out to them. You can always apologize. It is never too late. And for whatever reason, I do feel like this Justice card and even the Temperance card are speaking about second chances. So if something doesn't work out the first time, like let's say you applied somewhere and you get rejected or the answer is a no, but there is an opportunity to petition. If you feel called to do so, if you feel called to try again, Spirit is saying reapply because it's very, 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 very possible that you might get it the second time. Yeah, and because we do have the word morning here and the rooster, um, it's interesting. Group one, get the owl. You guys got the rooster. Um, so you could definitely be morning people and this is just confirmation that this group is for you, but it, the rooster could also be indicating that in the month of June, you will find yourself waking up quite early or earlier than usual um yeah but now i'm going to pull out some extra oracle cards to get any last messages advice and or guidance from spirit some of you guys might have been on the fence on whether to reach out to someone or not whether possibly maybe even to apologize or reconcile make amends And again, the choice is up to you, but if you feel it's too late, I feel like the universe is simply here to remind you it's not too late. Hmm, this is taking a while. Is there any message? Oh, there. Okay, so we have do something creative and play as often as you can. This will renew your energy. Yeah, so engage in activities that are simply for your pleasure. Not to meet a goal, but just do something for the sake of doing it. For the enjoyment and pleasure of it. Especially if you guys have been feeling creatively blocked or unmotivated, I feel like this will help in you feeling inspired again. But we also have keep up your positive vibrations by finding things that feel good when you think about them. If you're focusing too much on something that is out of your control and that is creating a lot of stress and worry, then redirect your focus on things that are in your control and get you feeling good when you think about them. Things that you enjoy. Um, yeah, but these are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance and clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you're new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the info is on my website. And the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. And a huge thank you to all of you who took a moment to watch the advertisement since that is a simple way to support me and to support this channel. So if you did know that I truly do appreciate it. Um, yeah, but that is all for now. Wishing you a wonderful month of June and until next moment. Bye bye. Hello you guys who chose the fire, bienvenidos to your reading. So before we get started, I would like to quickly go over a list of everything that is going to be covered in this reading. So there will be four parts. And in part one, I will be sharing with you what I intuitively picked up on when connecting with the energy of your group. In part two, I will be looking at oracle cards to get an overview of the month, find out what the main themes and lessons of this month will be, and so forth. In part three, I will be working with El Tarot, to get information about specific important events that will be occurring this month. And lastly, for part four, I will be pulling out extra oracle cards to get any last messages, advice, and or guidance from Spirit for the month of June. Okay, but now let us get started. So actually, very interesting. No messages <laughs> came to mind when tapping into this group's energy. All I felt was an air of mystery. Hmm, so some things might be up in the air this month. Hmm, but you know what? I feel that me not receiving any messages is an indicator that 
universe or spirit really wants for you to trust in yourself this month. It could be that they are wanting for you to practice listening to and understanding your intuition so that you can become familiarized with the sound of your inner voice, the feel of your gut feelings. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this month is about getting in touch with your inner compass. Yeah, because it's interesting that you guys were called to the fire because the fire is the only light in this darkness. So that's making me think of like your inner fire, your spirit, your essence, your light. So when you are in the unknown, when you are in uncertainty, go within. Because your inner light is what will guide you. Or is what will keep you from being consumed by this darkness. And I'm thinking of this darkness as loneliness. Yeah, if you are connected with yourself, if you are connected with your inner being, you will never feel lonely because you'll realize that you are never alone. Connecting with your inner being is, in essence, connecting with all that is, with source, with universe, with every living being in existence. So loneliness and separation is but an illusion because we are never alone. We only feel lonely when we are disconnected from ourselves. So if you have felt disconnected from yourself, from your inner being, from your inner spark, your inner fire, your inner light, this month could be about reconnecting, reestablishing that connection with self. I am being reminded of a line from a song. The artist Sigrid sings it and it's titled, It Gets Dark. And the line that is coming to mind is, it gets dark so I can see the stars. Yeah, so June could be a very revealing month for you. It's a month of clarity, cleansing, and transformation. Yeah, because fire is an element that is often worked with to cleanse. It is also an element that represents rebirth and transformation. So, yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This month could be pretty intense. I feel like a lot of harsh truths are going to be revealed this month and it's all with the purpose of giving you the clarity that you seek. It's all with the purpose of shining light. There are more messages that are coming to mind but before I get into them, I want to take a look at the oracle cards with you guys. So I did pre-pull these oracle cards here and it was just to save us some time but the cards that fall out for you guys are Number 19, with sweating like a sinner in church. And the key phrase is guilt, remorse, nerves, worry, confession, coming clean, apology, and integrity needed. And we also have kindreds as well as breath. Um, and now I just want to pull out a number. Okay, so we have, oh, actually, three numbers. We have five, seven, and seven. So we have a repeating number, seven. So the number seven could be of significance. You could be seeing a lot of repeating sevens this month, or more specifically, the number 77. And a seven is a number that stands for spirituality and, di and divinity. And the number five is a number that indicates change, unexpected changes transformative changes. Now what I was going to say before revealing the oracle cards that I kept myself from saying was that this month you are going to feel very connected with spirit because I feel like this fire here is representing spirit and for a lot of you I feel like it's about reconnecting with your spirituality, with your faith, your belief. I feel like this month you will be asking yourself the bigger, deep, and more meaningful questions what it is that you believe in, how it is that you connect with others, what it means to be of service. Mm. The phrase or the term light worker just came to mind. If you identify as a light worker or if you have been wondering whether you are a light worker or not or you've been contemplating on this concept, in the month of June you could be introspecting as to what is a light worker or what it means to be a light worker 
Yeah, I feel like this month is about going in depth, not shying away from asking those very uncomfortable and deep, meaningful questions. And most importantly, not shying away from the truth. Yeah, now looking at this image, it's making me think of like shadow work, you know, going deep within into the depths of ourselves or our subconscious to see what what is lying in the darkness. And it's all with the purpose of shining a light. I feel like this imagery here also represents facing your fears. No longer keeping fears hidden, tucked away in the darkness of our subconscious. I mean, some of you could be going through a spiritual awakening in the month of June. I just feel it's more like an awakening in general. It's a month where you are questioning old beliefs. You know, because there's certain beliefs, ideas that we are taught since we are very little. And we hold on to them as we grow older and older. And we never really question them or bring them into question. Because they have always just been there. Until we experience something that brings these beliefs up to be looked at. To be really looked at. Like, why is this true? Or why should it be this way? Where did this belief come from? Do I believe in this? Is this a universal truth? Or is it just an opinion? Do I still want to hold on to this belief? How does it align to the me who is right now and the person I am becoming? Yeah, so there will definitely be a lot of revelations this month. Some of them might be easier than others. And the word conversion did come to mind, so... I don't feel this is the case for everyone, but some of you could be converting, converting religions or um, philosophies, ideologies, beliefs. But with kindreds here, mm, I don't know. I feel like it's half and half. I feel like for some of you guys, you will, or some of you could be experiencing both, that you might be finding a community. It could be like a spiritual community. And it is through involving yourself in this community that you are going to feel inspired to really take a look within and start putting into question a lot of belief systems or possibly even putting into question a lot of habits or tendencies. Like, why do I often react this way when this is brought up? Or why do I feel ashamed about these certain aspects of myself? Or why do I feel shame about feeling this certain way about these certain things or this specific situation you know it, it's things like that but i'm also seeing a situation in which you could be leaving a community yeah i see some of you guys no longer resonating with a group of people or a specific collective like i once resonated with this i once believed in this but i don't feel the same way about it anymore it's like you're perceiving something differently your perception of something is changing and, and like i said some of you could be experiencing both you could be leaving a community and entering into a new different community or it is through you being exposed to a new community that you decide to leave your current community or an old community but with the kindred's card i do see connection and i was going to say did i say this at the beginning that the fire also represents warmth, and so I do see you supported this month. You will have support, and you will be supported by others, and I do feel like it's a group of people, but I also feel like this support, you will feel it from spirit. You will feel spirit around you in the month of June. Yeah, some of you could be going through a spiritual awakening, and you know, we, we can go through more than one spiritual awakening in a, in a single lifetime. Like every time we level up, every time we um, get an epiphany or get enlightened about something, we could go through some kind of awakening. So that could be the case for some of you guys. So with breath, there is an advice to take it slow this month. You know, fire survives with oxygen if there isn't O2 fire extinguishes. So remember your breath this month. You could even be doing some breath work like pranayama, for example, or you could be doing like breathing meditations. Yeah, and some of you could be having an experience as you're doing one of these breath work meditations or practices. I feel like there's like a pranayama technique that is called breath of fire. <laughs> 
Um, you could be practicing that in the month of June. Sorry, you guys, I had to pause recording and resume at a later time. Um, but I was talking about the breath of fire, and I do believe the breath of fire is a breathing exercise that is practiced in kundalini yoga. And I did mention something about an awakening. So some of you could be experiencing like a kundalini awakening or kundalini rising in the month of June, or maybe that's your aim. And it's all with the purpose of awakening the inner spirit, something like that. Yeah, but some of you guys could actually be attending a spiritual retreat in the month of June where you will be doing these practices. So you will be guided through it because I believe the breath of fire, it's like an advanced breathing technique or breath work practice. Yeah, so you could be led or guided by a, by a teacher, a guide, a guru maybe. Or maybe you yourself are a teacher, a guide, a guru, an expert, and you could be guiding or teaching others in the month of June. But with breath being here, whether or not you will be attending a spiritual retreat <laughs> or a yoga breath work class in the month of June, I do feel like the breath, being mindful of the breath, doing breathing exercises will be so important and pivotal in the month of June. Yeah, I, I feel like this is kind of a heads up to remember, remember your breath. Remember to inhale, sustain, and then slowly exhale. Especially when you're feeling nervous or anxious or worried about something. Remember the breath. Work with your breath. I feel like that is going to help you center. It is going to help you ground. And it's also going to help relax your nervous system. And it will definitely help you connect with your inner being. Um, but let's see. I feel like Kindreds is also indicating that in the month of June, you will be connecting with like-minded people or people who share the same interests as you. If you are learning about spiritual concepts, if you are you know, connecting more with your spirituality or are embarking on a spiritual journey, these people you will be connecting with are people who they themselves are on a spiritual path or journey or are about to embark on one. Yeah, but I do see connectedness with the Kindreds card. You feeling connected to others. Kindreds could also be indicating feeling a connection with the collective, you know, feeling connected with all that is. And I kind of mentioned that at the beginning, you know, in connecting with the inner spirit, your inner being, you are finding a connection with all that is, with source. Yeah, and I feel like that's what is being represented in this image. We have these people, light beings, who you are. You are a being of light who are connected, always connected, and all of them come from the same source, the same pool of water. Yeah, so you will be connecting with kindred spirits this month. This could also be indicating that you will be connecting with members of your soul family, your soul tribe, or just people that you consider to be part of your tribe. Yeah, it's like finding your family outside of your immediate family. Um, I also feel like these beings of light here are indicating the beings of light. You know, spirits, spirit guides, or ascended masters maybe, ancestors who will be working with you this month. I did say how you will be feeling very connected to spirit in the month of June. So yeah, so I do see you connecting with more than one being of light in the month of June. And to be more specific, I see you connecting with three beings of light. Since I am noticing that there are three birds in the breath card and three beings of light in the kindreds card. Some of you could be meeting your spirit guides. It could be through a meditation. It could be while you're doing some intense breath work exercises. Um, it could be meeting them in a dream, seeing them in a visualization. Because we do have this pool of water here, it could even be, for those of you who are familiar with, with scrying, which is a divination practice, you could even be connecting with spirit through scrying. I know fire is also an element that is used in divination practices. Um, there are people who meditate by looking at fire, that's how they kind of get into a trance. So if you are familiar with that practice, maybe that's something you're going to exercise in the month of June. But if so, caution, be careful, you know, we are talking about fire. And with the card breath, some of you could actually be channeling spirit. 
Like you could actively be channeling spirit or channeling messages. Some of you could be practicing mediumship, for example, but you could be serving as an intermediate, kind of the bridge between the spiritual and the physical world. Um, and if we look at this Kindred's card, we do see that there's these vines that wrap around this um, scenery here. So this is making me think of protection. If you are learning how to connect with spirit or you are starting to channel messages from spirit, remember to practice protection. I feel like for you guys in, in specific, it's very, very important to practice protection, protecting your energy setting intentions of who it is that you want to connect to, who it is that you want to channel, what kind of energy. Be very intentional as to who and what it is that you are allowing into your space. Yeah, because I'm noticing in, in the background we have all this darkness, as in this card with the fire. So this month, especially if you are embarking on a spiritual journey, if you are actively opening your channel, you know, to connect with spirit or to tap into energy, you might be very receptive, like sensitive or vulnerable to energy. So it is important to practice spiritual hygiene this month because if not, it's very possible that you will be absorbing, you know, other people's energy or you could be bombarded with messages from spirit that wishes to connect. So also... If you are channeling, remember, once you open your channel, set an intention of who it is that you want to channel. And once you are done channeling, set an intention to close your channel. Um, the vibe I'm getting with kindreds and the fire card here is discipline. If you are embarking on a spiritual practice, discipline is important and consistency as well. I feel like this month is also about exploring, seeing what works for you. You know, because some techniques, they may work for others, but not for you. And that's totally fine. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means that something else is meant to work for you. So see what works for you. See what you feel comfortable with. You know, when it comes to protecting your energy, cleansing, channeling, meditating, you know. Do you prefer to cleanse, energetically cleanse with water? Do you prefer to cleanse with smoke or fire? Do you prefer to do breathwork exercises? Or do you prefer to visualize? Yeah, it's about seeing what works best for you. And if something doesn't feel right, don't push it. That's the advice. If something doesn't feel right, don't push it. Don't try to force it to work. Listen to your intuition. Pay attention to what feels right. If something feels off, that's an indicator that maybe you should stop, pause, or take a step back. With the card, with the Sorry, I took a sip of water. Um, with the card, sweating like a sinner in church, I, I am picking up on guilt. That's the predominant feeling here. And I mean, if, if you are exploring a new spiritual practice or new spiritual beliefs, there could be guilt around that, especially if these practices or beliefs go against what you have been taught. You know, because for example, in some belief systems, divination isn't looked upon with fondness um you know el tarot oracle cards readings aren't acceptable or aren't accepted so there could be some inner conflict going on in the month of june like like debating what is right what is wrong between what you believe to be right and what you believe to be wrong and so forth yeah and i learned i have learned that guilt and shame are two very different emotions both are perceived as negative emotions, but I also learned that negative emotions aren't labeled as negative because they are inherently bad, but rather they are labeled as negative because they are uncomfortable. You know, guilt is an uncomfortable emotion. But the difference between guilt and shame is that shame condemns. Shame says... There is something inherently wrong with you. And so there is nothing that you can do about it. You're just a bad person. Whereas guilt, guilt says, mm, I do not align with what I just did. Or I do not align with what I just said. Guilt lets us know that something that we did or said or intended is not in alignment with our morals, with our values, with our belief systems. Like for example, if we value honesty, sincerity, transparency, 
but we are sneaking around or lying, um, we might feel guilty about that. And all that says is that we don't feel good about lying. And so we then have a choice. Do we continue lying or do we speak honestly? So when it comes to guilt, it's important to use discernment. Like, what are you feeling guilty about? Because just to give an example, let's say if you are exploring something new, something different in secret and you're feeling guilty about that, are you feeling guilty that you're exploring something new or different or are you feeling guilty that you are doing this in secret? You know, so it's important to discern because guilt also kind of lets us know what is important to us, what we value. Like in this example, it would be that the person values honesty or maybe values loyalty. So I do believe guilt is a healthy emotion, whereas shame, shame can create a lot of problems because it can result in feelings of low self-worth, self-deprecation, low self-esteem and so forth. So if there are any feelings of shame, I do sense that in the month of June, you are going to, oh... Oh, sorry, you're going to um, work through these feelings or this intense emotion because shame often keeps us stuck. And actually, um, if I recall correctly, the solar plexus chakra, which is also known as the fire chakra, is often blocked by feelings of shame. And the solar plexus is the energy center that deals with willpower, with our confidence, our self-esteem, how we view ourselves, our identity. So if you have been struggling with low self-worth or a low self-esteem, it could be that your solar plexus chakra is off balance or it is blocked by this feeling of shame. And I did mention how this month is about asking you the deep and meaningful questions. So in this case, in order to heal the solar plexus chakra, one would need to ask themselves, what is it that I'm ashamed of? Yeah, because this is about self-denial. So what about yourself are you rejecting? And then once you get your answers, it's working to embrace those aspects of yourself. To clear and open the solar plexus chakra is to accept and embrace all aspects of yourself. Yeah, and the thing about guilt and shame, I feel why they are often mixed up is because guilt if it's not addressed, it can build over time, turning into shame. So it's important to address feelings of guilt when it does come up. Yeah, because when guilt isn't addressed, it also results in blame, blaming oneself. And when we start blaming ourselves, that's when we start experiencing feelings of shame. So if you are experiencing guilt, then the questions that need to be addressed would be, what is it that you're blaming yourself for? And then see if if whatever it is that you're blaming yourself for is something that you were responsible for. Because oftentimes we end up blaming ourselves for things that we have had no control over. We blame ourselves for things that other people made us to believe was our fault, when in reality it wasn't. So it's important to address those things. And I know oftentimes we cannot see the reality of a situation because we're so caught up in it. We we believe what we have been told or we believe what it is that we feel that we can't see otherwise. And so that's when it helps to get a different perspective and unbiased be- view. And oftentimes that comes from speaking to others, from sharing our stories oh, with others. And it's interesting because we do have this what sort of looks like a campfire and you know people gather around a campfire to tell stories so you could be attending a ceremony or you could be attending um like a group event like a a group therapy group session kind of thing where you are sharing each other's stories where you are sharing each other's wounds and simply sharing speaking up voicing it that is very healing because when we keep things to ourselves when we just think about it mull it over in our heads we see it and experience it through bias perception but once we voice it like the minute that we voice it the minute that we hear it with our physical ears we start seeing it in a different light like things that seemed super scary once we speak it out loud might not seem so scary 
or once we share a story we might find that others have experienced the same thing and so we might not feel so alone or as mentioned you could be getting an unbiased perspective over the situation or matter that might bring much needed clarity so there is something about sharing your story with others um, healing with others healing with the community a group of people and I think I lost my train of thought um, <laughs> Oh, I was going to say that guilt guilt is also addressed by taking accountability. Because as mentioned, we might feel guilty about things that were out of our control. But there are times or situations in, in which we might be feeling guilty over an action that we were responsible for, that we willingly took. Um, and so what helps to release guilt then is to acknowledge the guilt, accept it and then take accountability you know either by forgiving ourselves or by for example reaching out to someone that we feel we did a wrong to and apologizing that to them and not with the intention of seeking their forgiveness but it's more about taking accountability yeah I feel like accountability is super important when it when it comes to guilt and taking accountability is not about self-punishment it is not about that Shame is all about self-punishment, and that allows no room for healing, no room for growth. So please don't confuse self-punishment or self-judgment with accountability, because it's, it's not the same thing. Taking accountability is more about acknowledging. Mm, and I got sidetracked, but when I got all excited and went, ah, um, it's because I was noticing these numbers, because I was talking about how some of you could be working through releasing feelings of shame or guilt in the month of June. Um, so what I was seeing with the numbers is that it's possible that a lot of you have been working through this. This could be a process that you started in May on the fifth month, and it could be a process that you will be finalizing in the month of July. Some of you could even have started a program um, or, or could have entered a program in the month of May, and it's ending in the month of July. You know, I did mention a spiritual retreat. But it could be like a therapy se session, counseling. And, and it's interesting because the color purple is showing up here. The color purple is associated with the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is about expansion. It's about being connected with source, with this infinite knowledge. So you could also be working to open, activate, or clear your crown chakra. Oh, and actually the crown chakra is the seventh main chakra. Yeah, so I do see your crown chakra opening and expanding in the month of June. And the phrase free thinking just came to mind. Yeah, because with the fire here, I feel like this month is about you embracing your individuality. So this month is about getting to know yourself, exploring. Um, the fire it is also making me think of se sexuality and sensuality. So some of you guys could be exploring more of that, your sexual identity, your sensuality, and, you know, releasing any shame when it comes to that. Whether you identify as a sensual being or not, you know, accepting or acknowledging your, your sensuality could be about that. This is what being sensual means to me personally. Or this is how I express my sensual and sexual energy. Maybe it's not through physical intimacy. Maybe it's through creativity. So I also see you tapping into your creative energy this month. Yeah, so this month seems pretty powerful. I am noticing that um, all the readings, all the groups thus far, they are getting pretty deep, <laughs> intense messages. The energy feels pretty transformative for the month of June. I feel it's all about endings. It's all about transitions, transformation, deep inner work and healing. Um, and I feel it's because we are entering a new era. We are about to commence a new cycle. This is a new phase. So we're getting ready to step out of the old to step into the new. And that means releasing. That means letting go of what, of what is limiting us, of what is holding us back of what is no longer in alignment with us. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm seeing. Oh, and it's interesting. Um, there is the number 19. If we reduce this number, we get the number 10. And 10 is all about endings, completion, conclusions. I'm also seeing it as a number of closure. So I do see you receiving closure this month. And as mentioned, 
um, I do see you being supported. I do with kindreds. I do see you finding your community. I do see you finding your tribe. But most importantly, what I see happening is you accepting yourself. You coming to accept more and more aspects of yourself. Um, but now I'm going to pull out some tarot cards to see what main and or important events will be occurring this month. Okay, so this one flipped over and we have the King of Wands with natural leader, innovative, and visionary. So we have more fire energy here. Oh, I forgot to mention the very obvious. Some of you guys might be a fire, sun, moon, or rising or have fire predominant in your chart. If so, this is serving as confirmation that this um, reading is for you. But if not, that is perfectly fine because this here is more describing the energy. Um, and fire, as mentioned, is associated with the solar plexus chakra. It is an element that indicates passion and creativity, as well as excitement. And with the king of wands being here, I do see you being in your power this month. Or coming more and more into your power. Mm, there is a level of compassion here. Compassion and understanding. You could be bestowing a lot of compassion towards yourself this month and towards others as well. And I know this might this might not sit right with everyone, but this is the message that is coming through. You might even be bestowing compassion towards those who you felt they have wronged you in some way. So um, you could also be practicing forgiveness this month. Yeah, because, I don't know, the King of Wands is often described as a very passionate, energetic, like bright as the sun kind of energy. But this King of Wands feels so gentle, so nurturing, so compassionate. It's like, yes, you have this fire within. Yes, you are passionate about what you believe in, about life, about helping others or possibly being of service. You are. You are passionate, but that doesn't mean that you're a raging fire that burns everything in its wake. You are a fire that burns not with the intention of burning and or hurting, but rather with the intention of offering light and warmth. Because this is the King of Wands, you could be leading a group this month. I did kind of mention that with kindreds, how it might be you who is teaching or guiding others. Um, or you could be um, given the role of a, of a leader this month, or you just be take, or you could just be taking a leadership role or position in the month of June. But I also feel like this King of Wands is representing the energy of someone else who could be a fire, sun, moon, or rising, or have a uh, fire predominant in their chart. This person could be a life path five or seven, or maybe it is you who is a life path five or seven. I do feel like this is someone who will be teaching or guiding you this month. This could be a leader of a spiritual group or of, or of a community, or it could be like a therapist, a counselor. This could even be like someone who is leading a nonprofit or like a founder of a charity or establishment. Uh, but I do feel like this King of Wands is of service in some way, service to others. Like that's what they have dedicated their life to, to be of service. That's their intention to help others. Yeah, so if, if you have been on a spiritual journey and you've been seeking a teacher, or that's what you were seeking at some point in your journey, a teacher, you know that phrase, when the student is ready, the teacher appears? Yeah, the teacher will appear this month. <laughs> you guys are ready. And it's because you're no longer seeking you're open to learning from someone else. You know, because oftentimes we might think we're ready to learn, like we want someone to teach us, but our ego is getting in the, in the way. And the ego isn't anything bad, but when the ego is imbalanced or when our ego is wounded, it can show up and create a bit of a chaotic energy because the wounded ego doesn't like to be taught. Even though it might believe it needs it, when it comes down to it, they reject it. And so I feel like it's possible that a lot of you guys have been working to heal um, a wounded ego or to heal the ego. And now you are at this point where the ego is open to receiving and learning from someone else. And that's why the teacher is appearing. 
And what I'm getting is that this teacher might come through in a very unexpected way or the person who will end up teaching you a valuable lesson in the month of June might be an unexpected person. Because, because I am noticing we do have um, an animal in this card. So it, for some, it could even be the case where your teacher is not in a human form, but rather could be appearing in a different form, in animal form, for example. But I do feel this is a person, a person who will be playing a significant role in your life in the month of June. This is the person who is going to offer a different perspective, an unbiased perspective. This is the person who is going to teach you valuable lessons. And I feel like this is also someone who will be learning a lot from you. It will be reciprocal because that's the vibe I'm getting with kindreds. Like you see, they're connected. They're, it's mutual here, the energy. They're sharing and they're receiving at the same time. So you will be learning from each other and helping each other in some way. But now I'm going to pull out another tarot card. This could also be someone who is simply inspiring you. They could, they could be a creator. They could be in the public eye. They could be an artist. But this is someone who leads with compassion. This is someone who does want to be of service to others. Uh, the other thing I'm seeing with the King of Wands is that in this month, you could be discovering what your true passion is. Some of you could be discovering that you are passionate about helping others or being of service to others. And, and not only humans, you know, helping animals, helping nature, being of service to nature. It's just about being of service to others. But like I said, others of you could be discovering that your passion is creating. It could even be entertaining, you know, <laughs> entertaining others. And that's a way of being of service because it's um, bringing joy to others. It's also helping others tap into their own creative energy by inspiring them, you know, by creating work that inspires, um, by creating work that helps others connect with their inner fire, their inner spark. I'm even seeing like creating work with the intention of um, helping others connect with their inner being. Uh, for example, like, like sacred geometry, creating like fre frequency music, meditation music, for example, or mantras. Uh, what's another thing? Like singing bowls or dance, yoga, for example, drums. Yeah, there's there's so many things out there. I just I just listed a few. But let me pull out another tarot card. Ooh, and we have the Eight of Cups with abandonment, walking away, and disappointment. Yeah, as you can see in this image, we have a person running, and this person just, like, stopped midway. Like, decided to no longer run. So I, the, the vibe I'm getting here is deciding to no longer chase. Like, I'm no longer chasing or running after something that isn't for me or I don't resonate with. The, the message that just came to mind was, I don't chase, I attract. Um, so I do see you guys letting go of so much in the month of June. Or, ooh, what just came to mind with the Eight of Cups is letting go of someone else's dream. Instead, you're choosing to find your own way, to find your own path, to find your own dreams. What is it that you want? What is it that you desire? The Eight of Cups also speaks about introspection, and I definitely see you introspecting this month, coming to awareness of several things. The Eight of Cups also speaks about seeking the truth. So this is about you seeking your own truth. Not so much what is the universal truth, but it's about you seeking your inner truth. What is true to you? What is of value to you? And the Eight of Cups can also speak about courage because it takes courage to walk away from things that no longer serve us. It takes courage to stand up for ourselves, to go on the search for our own dreams. It takes courage to choose our own path and walk on it. And mm, I feel like that's where the courage is needed. And also that's where the trust in self is needed. And I feel like that's why um, there was that message at the beginning of trusting yourself this month, of you believing in yourself, like making a decision without needing to run it by others or a specific group of people without needing someone else's approval. I mean, it's it's good. It's always helpful to ask for advice. Yet, if we're doing something that we don't believe in, if we're saying yes when we want to say no, then we aren't staying true to us. Yeah, so I feel like this month is like creating pause, 
Like I've been running this race for so long that I forgot that I've been running this race. And it's like all of a sudden there's this awakening, <laughs> like something startles you into awareness. And then you realize, oh, wait a minute, why am I running? Or like, where am I headed? Um, this could even be something like you have been chasing a dream for so long that you have forgotten why you started even chasing this dream, why you even started pursuing this in the first place. And that's when you might go into introspection, like, what is the reason for me being on this path? Do I want to continue being on this path? Do I still feel the same way I did when I started on this path? If not, is it time to, is it time to move on? Is it time to reroute? Yeah, so this month seems pretty powerful, <laughs> um, very transformative. Yeah, but... Um, because we do have a campfire here. Some of you could go camping in the month of June. We do have people running here. So uh, you could be joining a marathon or a race this month. Or you could simply start running as a form of exercise or as a form of meditation. And like I said, some of you could be um, joining a spiritual group, a group therapy, or you could be going to a spiritual retreat. With fire, uh, you could be cleansing your home, your house, your space. Cleansing as in cleaning, like a thorough cleaning, but also cleansing as in cleansing the energy. Yeah, but that's what I'm seeing so far. Um, when it comes to zodiac signs, I did mention fire signs, so Leo, Sagittarius, and or Aries, and let's see what else. These numbers could be of significance. 5, 7, the number 19, or the numbers 1 and 9. It could be that the 19th of June, or the 7th of June, or the 5th of June could be important dates. Oh, and with the breath card, I'm also thinking of air signs. So Libra, Gemini, and or Aquarius. Yeah, there is a message on the back of this card. And actually, this other card fell out for you guys, which are the fireflies in a jar. So fireflies could be an important um, animal, insect, uh, a spirit animal maybe, or an, a good omen for you guys. For some, I feel it could be, be serving as confirmation. Um, but the message on the back of the fire card is follow the spark. Oh, yeah. Um, I did, did I say with the King of Wands, you could be feeling very creative this month, uh, very motivated to create or to explore, to learn something new. And also, you could be creating with others. You could be collaborating with others to create something. Or like I said, to be of service in some way. Again, because there are three birds and three beings of light, you could be working in a team or group of three. Or you could be working or collaborating with three different people this month. Oh, and three numbers fell out. The numbers 5, 7, and 7. So this could be indicating life path numbers or birth months. These people you will be working with may be a life path 5 or 7, or, or they could have been born in the months of May or July. Mm, but the number 3 seems to be significant, or sets of 3. Like 3 people, 3 birds, or a number repeated thrice, like 333. Three, three. So pay attention to the number 3, or anything that comes in sets of 3 since that may be a lucky or good omen or an indicator that you are on the right path. You could, some of you could also be offering a service this month. Um, it could be like a creative ser service, like accepting commissions um, or I'm even getting like a, a spiritual service, energy healing, um, channeling messages, which I kind of didn't mention that, like mediumship, for example, um, doing readings maybe working with divination tools to channel messages, connect with spirit and so forth. Um, yeah, but uh, the message on the back of the firefly card is shine your brilliant light. Yeah, shine your light. You are of light, you are light, so shine your light. Mm. Looking at this firefly card, it's making me think of releasing your dreams. I feel, I feel like you have kept your dreams in a bottle in order to pursue someone else's dreams and now what you are doing is you're releasing your dreams like no longer will i keep you hidden no longer will i keep you in a jar i will set you free free because you these dreams of mine 
They are a part of me and I am choosing to no longer hide who I am or hide myself. So I allow for myself to be free. I free myself. That's the message I'm seeing with um, the Firefly cards. Hmm, very nice. There could be a song titled Firefly. <laughs> that could be of significance. That just came out of nowhere. Um, yeah, like I said, some of you guys could go camping this month. Yeah, but these are all the messages I'm seeing thus far. So now I'm just going to pull out some extra oracle cards to get any last messages, advice, and or guidance from Spirit. For the month of June. Okay, so two cards fell out together or flipped over more like and we have procrastination simply means you are not energetically ready. Don't push. You will get what you need done when you are ready and it will be effortless. Ooh, and I'm noticing this person here seems to have their crown chakra pre pretty active because it seems like they are sending out signals or receiving signals. So some of you guys could be experiencing like telepathy. Um, this month or like I said you will be channeling spirit a lot this month some of you could be actively channeling spirit so I definitely see you working with your crown chakra a lot in the month of June uh, but we also have the message confidence is not needed to move forward in life focus on the very act of moving forward and in that momentum confidence will be found yeah, oh, all the seven chakras aligned, lit, and functioning. Yeah, so this is also making me think of like a kundalini awakening, like being in alignment, a spiritual awakening. Um, but the lion is making me think of the sign Leo, which is also a fire sign. So there's a lot of fire energy. We also have the energy of the sun. Um, so some of you could be a Leo sun or someone who has... Sun and Leo could be playing a significant role this month. Uh, but yeah, I was going to, going to say oftentimes we believe that in order to take action, in order to pursue our dreams, we first must be confident. Um, but you no, know, confidence is something that happens gradually. A confidence is something that is created as we start pursuing our dreams, as we start putting ourselves out there, as we start believing in ourselves more and more. So don't wait to be confident in order to start living. Live and then you will start seeing your confidence growing. Yeah, but remember there's an inner fire within you. There's an inner spark that is igniting in the month of June. You are a passionate being. You are made of light you are made of stardust mm, i feel like this is indicating a duality you can be as hot and as intense as a burning fire but you can also be as soft and warm as the glowing light of a firefly so embrace all aspects of yourself don't wait to be a complete perfect version of yourself before you choose to love yourself because perfection is an illusion. But these are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you're new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Yeah, but that is all for now. I'm wishing you a wonderful month of June and until the next moment, bye-bye.